So one of the ways I've been sharing this recently, and I've had loads and loads of positive feedback from you all about this, is the kind of Vedanta style teaching, which is only one one of the possible ways this can be shared. You know, one of infinite possible, an infinite number of ways this can be shared. But it tends to work very, very well. It might not work for everyone. And if it doesn't work for you, there's another teaching for you. But the Vedanta style teaching, what I often call the awareness teachings, the subject object teachings, it can be really useful and really powerful. And they essentially rely on you having a sense that you exist. And that sense that you exist is called the self. The sense that you exist is called the self. It's called the self because it's you. And there's a sense of, of that you, it's that it's you're here. For example, you might be watching this video now, this live satsang, or you might be watching it later in another format, in a video somewhere. But when, it was the same you that woke up this morning and did what you did. Maybe you um, brushed your teeth in the morning and got changed and had breakfast. That was a, there was a you that did that, and that's the same you now that's watching this video and when you were much much younger when you were 14 and 15 years old and you were looking out through your 14 and 15 year old body even though your body was slightly different then and your think your thought processes was were different then and your environment was different then many of us will have the sense that yes that was still me there that was still me I was 15, but that was still me. It's the same essential me. There's something about me that's continuous and doesn't change and stays the same despite everything else that's happening. What is that? What is that essence of me that I'm certain is me? It doesn't change. Although everything else changes, the world changes, the body's changing. The thoughts and the feelings, the sensations in the mind, the emotions in the mind are all changing. My beliefs and my aspirations are changing, but it's my beliefs that are changing. It's my body that's changing. It's my environment that's changing. It's my feelings that are changing. What is, who is this me that all these things are happening to? This me that's unchanging, that's the same. It's the same essential me. So to quickly go through the teachings, to not spend too much time on it, we say that the consciousness, the awareness that's present, that's looking, is unchanged. The body changes, the mind changes, but they're not you. They're not the essence of what you are. The essence of what you are is this consciousness that never changes. And that's what you are. That's your Sharupa, that's your true nature. It's consciousness and presence and bliss. It's whole and complete, that's why they call it Ananda or bliss. And doesn't matter what's happening in the world, it's it's non it's unaffected by anything that's happening. It's the essence of you that's unaffected by anything that's happening. Now, can you all get a sense of that? Doesn't matter what's going on, the essence of you is always unchanged. I can see I've got a couple of questions. Well, I think I've got one question actually. I'll address it in a bit. 
So the consciousness never changes. Now, the way the teachings work is that we have to accept certain conceptual ways of looking at consciousness or framing this. And then the teachings will start to work really well. So the way the, the teachings work conceptually is we say this consciousness is the essence of what we are. It doesn't matter what's going on in the body, mind or world. The consciousness, the consciousness is unaffected. The awareness is unaffected. It doesn't change. But the awareness doesn't do anything either. You, they say in the scriptures that it's unacting. It's actionless. It doesn't do anything. Because all movement and doings occur in the world of objects. The phenomenal world of objects. But the self, the subject, doesn't do anything. Everything happens in the presence of the self. But the self itself doesn't do anything. It doesn't move. It's, and it's silent and still and unacting. And when, if your mind is quiet and keyed into these teachings, even now while you're listening to my words and maybe you're moving and doing things and thinking things, you'll realise that actually you're not doing anything. You're not moving, you're not thinking or anything. The body mind might be moving. The eyes and the head might be moving and looking around. The mind might be thinking. The emotions might be happening. But in terms of you, the true nature, you're not doing anything. You're not moving. Just ever still, ever present. The na your nature is existence, consciousness, happiness, bliss, love. The nature is Sat, Chit, Ananda. And if you remember, Sat is the Sanskrit word for truth or being. And Chit is the Sanskrit word for consciousness or awareness or knowingness. And Ananda, as we said, is the, is the Sanskrit word for happiness or bliss. And it's, it, it denotes also the quality of love. In Sanskrit, prem, prem means love. 